Today on Living by Design. Is it just me? Miss Kerr, I want nothing more to do with this child. I want her out of my life. Am I the only one? You're a ward of the state. What's that mean? Nobody loves you. You're not going to be alone. Could you lend a hand? How would you feel about being my daughter? A white woman cannot know the needs of a black child in our society. I'm not the right race, but I am the right mother for her. Is anybody The girl needs behavioral correction. She needs a loving home. I would do anything for this child. Tony Lamont presents Living by Design with host Kathy Holloway Hill. Kathy is a strong, powerful voice. She entertains, informs, and inspires her audiences everywhere she goes. Today, because it is a very special show with a very incredibly special individual who I recently met, and she has already impacted me so significantly, and she should have impacted you because her autobiography was featured on not only the Lifetime channel, but also Lifetime Movie Network, talking about her autobiography with her experiences and her journey in the foster care system. And that is none other than Miss Regina Louise. Regina, welcome to Living by Design, beautiful. Hey there, Kathy, you look beautiful, wow. You look beautiful, wow. <laughs> oh my goodness. Been, and you know what's even more beautiful? Your spirit. Oh, that's Your fantastic. spirit is incredible. And my listeners and viewers are just going to absolutely love you. So. If you don't care, I'm just going to jump right in because I have so many questions. Go. Shoot. First of all, the movie. Okay, so I don't really want to talk as much about the movie as I want to talk about you. Mm. Because I know, you know, sometimes movies can have things one way, but it's really another way. So I want to talk about your personal journey. So how old were you when you actually got put into the foster care system? At birth. At birth. Is that right? Right. But your entire life? Right. Wow. Do you, you never remember living with your mother or your biological father? I mean, there were intermittent times in my life when I was sent to live with them. And if you know anything about attachment theory, there was no attachment. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So then the, in the movie, and I don't really know if this actually happened, how did you end up at the very first place, the shelter? How did you end up there? Did you just wander in there or did someone, police officer or someone really take you there? I lived in a home with a woman that my father had left me in whose care my father had left me. Okay. She, she was very religious, very physically violent and abusive. Mm. And I knew I, I couldn't tolerate her speaking Jesus out of one side of her mouth and, mm. and wanting to beat Satan out of me in the other side of her mouth. So the reality was my father stopped paying her for taking care of me. 
and she wanted to take recompense out of my behind. It, you know, it was just vindictive and, you know, just misplaced rage and anger. And, yes. You know, that, that whole thing about the sins of the mother or the sins of the father. Right. Oftentimes, people are going to come for the kid. They, they want someone to be accountable. We want to blame somebody. And it was, it was, you know, it was, you know, an act of, of violence to take it out on me. But I imagine for her, an act of satisfaction. And how old were you at that point? I was, it was the day, this, at this point when I left, it was the day before my 13th birthday okay. because I had to escape her. I jumped out of the second floor window and uh, turned my and ran to the Richmond, California Police Department. But I had called them ahead of time to yes. see if they would throw me in jail if I turned myself in. And they said, when I got there, they threw me in a cell. And then later that night, early in the morning, drove me to the Edgar Children's Shelter in Martinez. Mm. And so that at the Edgar Children's Shelter, that's where a lot of the autobiography, as we saw it, that's where a lot of that activity occurred when you connected with Miss Kerr. Right. Um, is that her real name? Yeah, Jean Kerr. Okay. So that's when you all made the connection and that's when you realized that's when you realize that uh, you were starting to feel something because I'm sure that, you know, you were pr probably numb, you know, emotion wise at that point. But that's when you started to feel something towards someone that you thought cared about you. Right. And, and, and here's the deal, Kathy, just for the record. I think that I was more alive than numb because that's one of the problems. If a child has shut down, connection is very unlikely, very unlikely. It's when two people are able to come together and there's still trust and there's still hope and there's still the possibility of the connection, although I, I would not have had that language back then. I knew, you know, to my mother's credit, I believe she and I attached when I was very young. Well, that makes sense because there is a part of me that feels adored. There is a part of me that knows what love is. There is a part of me that is aware, that remembers. And so my mother must have done that. I met because I also remember in therapy, you know, in my 30s. My therapist said, Gina, you must know love to, to have the degree in, of, of love that you have. You knew it. Someone taught that. That's learned. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm so, I'm so grateful that you were able to capture that. And then having the love of Christ also, you know, you got to put God in there because that I know is also what helped to, to get you through. Right. So when you were in this children's shelter, somewhere during that period of time, you bonded and you connected and it got to a point where you actually went through an adoption attempt. Now, I want to ask you about the director, uh, the person who was running that shelter. Now, this was an African-American woman like us. What was up with her? And that's the only way I know how to ask that question. What 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 was her issue, her thing? Well, I guess it would depend on the worldview that you have. In in my worldview then, she was evil. She was mean. She was adversarial in my worldview then. And Regina, I'm going to stop you right there because we need to take a quick break, a, a quick break for our sponsors. And you guys stay right where you are because there is so much more that you're going to hear from this amazing spirit. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We are still here with the beautiful Miss Regina Louise. And Regina, before the break, 
we were talking about the director of the center and, you know, how she had the mindset that she had during that time period, because it was an era when there was a lot of racism and oppression and, and, and a lot of things going on. The way you handled that was remarkable, in my opinion, because, I mean, you could have had an attitude toward white people, but you didn't. And, and I applaud you for that. I mean, I just think your spirit, the way you handled a lot of the, the, the situations that you went through and some of the things you said in the first segment were, were just incredible. And, you know, you had a lot of inner strength. You know, that, that's what's missing in a lot of people today. Mm. It's that inner strength to be able to overcome those obstacles. So, so you went through the adoption attempt and that was blocked and that right. failed. Right. And then, then you, where were you sent? Where was that place where you were sent next? It's in Northern California, a level 14 residential treatment center mm -hmm. because my social worker felt that I needed, you know, she calls it behavior correction, behavior modification. And, you know, I like, I had a meeting there last weekend, this past weekend, I had a meeting with the CEO of one of the largest nonprofit conglomerates in California. And as we were sitting, having breakfast, I was, I was facilitating a restorative justice circle for a wellness fair that he put on, that he sponsored. And so we were having our breakfast and he said, you, after I saw your movie and I saw uh, the, the HBO documentary Foster, what I recognize is you are far more forgiving than I could ever be. Amen. And, you know, you know, it was an interesting statement coming from a man of Jewish heritage, right? And I thought to myself, I have enough burdens and baggage and collected we all do. histories to carry. The yeah. last one that I want to, to be responsible for is the history of someone else's ill intentions toward me. I yes. don't have that. I don't have time for that. I struggle daily with my own self-worth with, with yes. the impact of all of this. The yes. last thing I want to do is encourage it by right. not forgiving it. Amen. Amen. Right. I, I, I want to talk about, because for me, th this was, was pretty major, keeping you drugged mm. and keeping the correspondence, the communication, the letters, the phone calls from Jean away from you, your mother not right. allowing you to say, I, I want you to talk to that. So what I'm going to talk to first, first is sometimes when the conversation gets a little triggering, I got to pick up Charlie. Charlie's my bear. Aww. Charlie is my Hi, Charlie. Object. Charlie is my object permanency. So when I need to stay connected to my heart and my spirit, I nurture the little girl in me by, by holding Charlie. So yes, ma'am. I'm going to hold Charlie as I, so ask, ask that question again. I wanted to know while you were in that facility where they felt like you needed some behavioral work, I want to talk about the drugs and the fact that they kept all of the correspondence, the communication, the letters, the attempts to, to talk on the phone away from you. Mm -hmm. They didn't allow your mother to write you or you okay. couldn't write to her. What? 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 Well, what comes, up for, what comes up for you, right? You know, injustice. Control. This was about a power over. I, to a lot of people, I was considered precocious. I was considered out of control, uncontrollable, blah, 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 blah. So in order to, in order to try and eradicate a problem, we first have to identify the problem. Yes. So if we take my need to belong and connect and be loved and we criminalize that, 
like that we have in this culture in this country we have a history of that so it's not unique to me you didn't realize that the letters were being kept from you until later on so you literally thought that your mother was not communicating with you oh it was it was awful and in reality i yeah because in reality i tried to commit suicide because i thought she had just yes. abandoned me and left me and mm -hmm. they were okay i think what's interesting a, a more interesting question is they were okay with having a hand in my potential self-destruction mm -hmm. so you have to look at it from if we turn the camera around and we look at it from their perspective right which is something I haven't done that often, they were complicit in my self-destruction. Yes. They actually architected, in a lot of ways, my own self-destruction, because in that way, it can justify the level 14, it can justify the, the metting out uh, outrageous drugs, it, yes. which basically, it's a chemical straitjacket, it's what they're doing to the children at the border. Wow. Right now. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an institutional systematic way of dispossessing a human from his or her God-given inalienable right. And in my opinion, it is an absolute violation of the Declaration of Independence that this country is supposedly founded upon. Absolutely. It's an absolute violation. And, and I'm going to tell you, Regina, oh, my goodness, I could talk to you for hours. We're going to take another quick break. And please stay right where you are, because as you can see, this brilliant young lady has so much insight. And I hope this is helping someone, because I know it's really helping me. So we're going to take a quick break. Don't worry, well, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are still here with Ms. Regina Louise, and I'm enjoying this. This has just really been an incredible discussion with an incredible young lady. So, you know, Regina, let's talk about your reconnection with your mom. I mean, we could just, there's so much we could talk about, but I'm just really trying to get a lot in here because your story is just so compelling. So when you finally got through the challenges and the hurdles and you were able to reconnect, how did that feel? There's no word for it. I can imagine. I can imagine. And then you went through with the adoption. Even at, at how old were you, 40? 40. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Now, I'm going to tell you, I cried. Well, I cried on, on most of the entire movie, but I really cried on that part when, when you guys reconnected. That was such an incredible moment. And, and I'm sure you're still close to this very day. Yeah. I just spoke to her an hour ago. Oh, I'm so happy about that. Now, you have so much going on. Oh, my goodness. I want to know about your book. So what is the title of both your books? You actually have two books. But if you you know want to give the titles of your book, please do. Yes. This book is the book that is currently out. It's most of the movie is based on someone has let this child to believe. And I think that this is the real deal. Yes. The other is the real deal too, but it's so important, Kathy, to, to investigate what any one person has led you to believe. Yes. And that's what this is about. And had I believed, I would not have had the movie, I Am Somebody's Child made. Yes. Because I was led to believe that I was not worth the air I breathe. Mm. I love the way you said that because even though that book talks about your journey and the hurdles you overcame in the foster care system, it could still be a great roadmap for anyone who's dealing with trauma and drama and life awesome. issues and, okay. and dysfunction. And I mean, I had a lot of dysfunction in my family growing up with my biological family. So that could be a roadmap, a Bible for anyone. Yeah. So please hold that book up again and tell our viewers where can we, I, I already got the book. So tell our viewers, where can they order the book? They can order it from me and digital 
format. Okay. I What's your website? Yeah, w, w dot I am Regina Louis. No, I'm sorry. What is my oh w w dot I am Regina Louise dot com. That's my okay. website. Okay. On Instagram, the real Regina Louise, because you know there could be imposters out Amen. there. Amen. Yes. The real Regina Louise. So yeah, th those are the best ways to get a hold of me or reach out. And Amazon, you know, mostly I would go to Amazon yes. and get it. Uh yeah. Do you have a Facebook profile, Facebook page? I do. Yeah, my Facebook is my name, and then you'll see me standing against a backdrop that says lifetime on it yes that, that's me regina louise so yeah i think and that's, and so that's on your screen for you viewers that's on your okay. screen so you'll be okay. able to, to see it and find it yeah. right right yeah. so so what do you have coming up do you have any special projects coming up um any more movies in the works what what would you like for the viewers to know about what's going on with regina louise well, I want to see how well this movie does. And if this movie does as well as I hope it does, I'd love to pitch a television series, a couple. One, investigating like a docu-series where yes. we go out and find my family. Right? Oh, my God. Right? I love and it. Then, and, then, and then another is a docu-series or investigative series where I go out and expose other people's stories, other people going through this, whether they be yes. alum or kids trapped in the system, or just a series where we follow a main character. And we literally show this journey to whatever the end game is. And I have a one woman show that I would love to get developed for off Broadway. And I, I have a lot of projects. And then the, the one project that will probably come before any of it is I have a personal growth book that I'm working on because people ask me all the time, how did you do this? Yes. Yeah. yes. Well, I, I have a book that I'm working on that will identify the seven strategies mm. that I've used to architect the life that has worked for me. I love you so much. I I just, I want to reach through there and just give you a big cyber hug. Yeah, you just did. Charlie, oh. Charlie's the conduit. Oh, yes. Thank you, Charlie, for that. I want to let you viewers know that Regina will actually be in the Indianapolis area this July for our Black Expo because she's going to be one of the keynote speakers. So look for her and look for that because I want that place to be standing room only. And I'll I am facilitating a workshop. Amen. Yes. At, at Expo also? Yes. Excellent. At, well, I know I'll be there. There is no doubt, and I will be able to give you a great big hug in person. Yeah. I am so proud of everything you're doing and everything you have done. Regina, let me ask you this, 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 this one last question. Mm. If you had to give advice to the viewers who are watching, the viewers who live in Pity City, the viewers who did not have the inner strength to overcome their hurdles and obstacles, and they still are nurturing and 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 and, and that inner child and them is still damaged and they're still hurt and they they just they lash out at people and they're angry and and they're bitter and and they're you know they're mad at the world what advice would you give those people to try to help them come out of that place of darkness i have a, a plethora of advice but i will say this is the first thing that sort of says say this that within them the mother that they are looking for they have an even better mother within them because that part of them that's already good enough, that part of them that's already, that's already full and beautiful and just waiting for them to turn their attention to it and attune with it is already good enough. There's no such thing as you're not enough, you're not good enough, you're broken, you're damaged. That's, that's pejorative thinking that isn't true. What is true is 
every single one of those people that you've talked about, the difference between them and me is I give myself permission. Mm. That's very, very powerful and beautiful, amazing angel in my life. I thank God that I was able to connect with you. I mean, I just feel like I want you to be part of, of me, part of my family. Aww. I just, I love you. I Aww. love you, Regina Thank you. Louise. Thank I love you, you. Kathy. Thank you so much. I always get emotional on certain shows, and I knew I was going to do this. I said, Kathy, no, don't. But I love you very much. And I love you, you back. You That's have why been I in I have Charlie because I oh, knew no, I know, right? Thank you, Charlie. There was a potential that I too, I mean, I'm very, very emotional. Trust yes. me. It, yes. My heart is full. I just I don't want to give up ugly face right now, Kathy. I I know. I, neither one of us, because you're way too beautiful for that. I don't think you could do do it if you tried. Mm. But thank you so much for talking to my viewers. You have been an incredible guest. Mm. We thank you for joining us for this episode of Living by Design, and we hope that it helped you. And we are going to see you next week, same time, for another episode of Living by Design. Good evening, everyone.